There we go, folks. Doing a little bit of long line jigging right now. Out here on Lake of the Ozarks. Show you my setup back here. Right now I got four rods in the water. I've got a double jig set up on each rod. So I got a video if you wanna learn how to tie a double jig rig. The only difference in this one versus that one is I do leave my top loop dangling. So when you're trolling these jigs, it allows that jig to be out away from your line. I'm just gonna let that line out. This is my shorter rod, so I'm gonna have it on the inside. Like so. I'm only going about 0.9 miles per hour right now. So usually when you're long line jigging, you go a little bit slower than you would if you were trolling crankbaits. Main difference in your speed with a crankbait and long line jigging is with a crankbait, the faster you go, the deeper they get because of that bill on the front. And long line jigging, the faster you go, the less deep they go. They run higher in the water column. So you want to slow down when you long line jig to let those jigs get down in the water. I have an eighth ounce jig on the bottom and a sixteenth ounce jig above it. It's pretty windy today. It's probably a 15 mile an hour wind today. We're going straight into the wind. I'm down on Lake of the Ozarks. The jigs I have tied on all have blades on them. So the top one I'm running is a little road runner, that 16th ounce. And that bottom eighth ounce is just some cheap ones I bought off Amazon that have blades on them. Just a little bit bigger jig. Only reason I'm running four rods is because that's all I brought today with me on the boat was four spinning rods. I've got bait casters on the boat. I don't think they're gonna handle three sixteenths ounce of jig too well. They all have pretty heavy monofilament line on them. These are all six pound fluorocarbon line. Should allow them jigs to get down there a little bit more. I think I got another one on. Maybe. Yeah. Did not have one on. Thought I had one there. Thought my rod tip was bowing a little bit. Here's one. Just gotta remember to tighten that drag down and he got off. Darn it. It's a downside of having my drag loose. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it down and watch my rod tips so I can get good hook sets. Lower these rod tips down a little bit. It's a nice thing about these spider lock rod racks is you can adjust everything very easily on them. Got one. Nice. Got another one. He hit the pink. Pink and chartreuse. I think I got another one. Sure do. That's a chunky one. A healthy crappie right there. Nice. Real nice crappie. You can see my lines moving. I'm not going in a straight line. They all move that way because I made a left hand turn. 
kind of straighten them back out a little bit. The reason I make those erratic turns left and right, gradual turns, they're erratic but gradual, is to slow and speed up my inside and outside jigs. That can trigger some bites. Even though all these rods are six and a half or seven foot rods, I think the two insides are, that's a six, that's a six and a half, and the two outsides are sevens. With these spider lock rod racks made by Millennium, they're so adjustable that I can easily still get, I've got probably four foot of separation and three to four foot on that side, just by being able to tweak the rod holders and the racks. So everything on the rod racks is adjustable. You can raise the height of the rod rack bar or you can lower it down. So it's low setting is about 12 inches, it's high setting is about 20 inches. The bar on top is adjustable as well. You can unscrew this knob and turn that bar however you'd like it. And then each individual rod holder is also adjustable. You can raise and lower your rod or you can turn each one of these. So everything's very easily adjustable by hand. We're about to go through a mess of fish. Hopefully something down here bites. Oh, that one was moving. There it goes again. I think I got him that time. Yep, get up. Tangled up in that line. And he got off right when I tried to cross my line. Darn it. So I'll put my smaller road runner on first. Just let him run down the line. Try and watch three rods, control the boat, and tie two jigs on at the same time. for the top loop knot. That's what I was saying earlier, how I uh, leave my top loop knot so that jig's standing off the line a little bit more. I wanted to take a second to show you these jigs that I'm trolling with today. So that's that eighth ounce jig that I bought off Amazon. Pretty cheap for a whole pack of them. I can't remember how much it was, but I can put a link to that in the description below. And then some road runners on top. So an eighth ounce and a sixteenth ounce is what I was trolling with today on each one of those rods. The lures that I'm trolling with are the crappie magnets. So I've got these in numerous colors. Blue and chartreuse, black and chartreuse, white and chartreuse. Um, and then those I'm running all on the bottom heavy jig. Then on the top jigs, I'm throwing a little bit smaller profile. I'm throwing some of the Bobby Garland strollers and the ice blue and electric chicken. I like all these baits because they all have tails that have action on them. I think when you're trolling, the more action you have, and even that little blade to give a little bit of flash helps attract those crappie. Well, we didn't exactly crush them today, long line trolling, but that's fishing. I just wanted to do something different and show you all something different today. Hopefully you were able to pick something up from this or you at least enjoyed the video. If you did, please click like on the video. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate that.